We're joined by Mr. Dent for the balance of the hour, best-selling author, Harry Dent. He's made some of the biggest predictions. I won't go over those in the last 20-plus years. HarryDentResearch.com, HarryDent.com. And uh, he, of course, has an MBA from Harvard Business School and worked at Bain and Company as a top strategist consultant for Fortune 100 companies. And, of course, he's been a CEO of major uh, companies as well. And he joins us. We appreciate him coming on. I want to get more of the demographic cliff because now everywhere, not just Donald Trump, but I was on CNN's website this morning and they had big economists saying that we're going to go over the edge of a cliff and QE's ending and uh, the British government saying that. Clearly, they think some police state will save them from what's coming, but the system knows it's going to be catastrophic. Why would they throw an Obamacare in that if I was going to design something to stall the economy, it'd be Obamacare? Uh, I mean, are they consciously trying to wreck the economy while they consolidate it? Are they insane? Because I used to think it was more of a conspiracy, and there's obviously corrupt stuff going on and organized crime and government. But more than that, I really think with their public bragging about ripping us off and acting delusional, I'm now prescribing more and more to the fact that, like Nero or Hitler or anybody else, that the political class is going insane right now. Uh, Mr. Dent, what do you think is happening? Because I want your take on Obamacare and, and top strategists that were involved in it admitting it's a giant screw job. Why would they then brag about screwing us? I mean, wh what's wrong with these people? Well, yeah, first of all, uh, we're in la-la land when it comes to entitlements. We, there is no way we can pay what's been promised in health care and, and in Social Security. Uh, pension plans are already realizing this. The, the typical person, because I study demographics, retires at age 63, not 65, and then they will live another 22 years. You cannot live with full health care benefits and Social Security. Governments cannot afford to fund that with the largest generation in history moving into these age ranges. So so right now we're just beginning to feel the sting and the cost of health care, and, and, and this is only going to make it more costly. The truth is, Alex, the biggest thing that needs to happen, something that will only be forced in a crisis, we need to be retiring at age 75, not 63 to 65. See, I've gone up since the how much our life expects in the 30s and 40s. We're not adjusting for this. And, and it's crazy to think we can support, people can work for 40 some years and then be supported for 20 some years by the government. It's just endless deficits. We're gonna see endless deficits even in good times. And of course, my demographics have been predicting difficult times. The only indicator that predicted the crash in Japan in the early 90s when everybody thought Japan was gonna take over the world. It is pointing down for China. It is pointing severely down for Germany. And the U.S., although we peaked back in 2007 with the spinning of our baby boom generation, we're going to see a bigger demographic drop, which comes after age 53. And that is this year peak for the baby boomers. So all the trends I have point down. And what do governments do? The worst thing they're doing, Alex, is they're pumping up the economy with steroids. I call it the markets on crack. They're just pumping money into the economy to keep it going and not allowing massive debt to rebalance and restructure. Well, let me There's ask you this question, because we've, we've right. talked about these basic market facts, and at the bottom of the hour, we'll go through some of your new graphs and some of your old graphs for folks. But how do you expect, as an analyst, a guy that has a really good brain and has made a lot of accurate predictions, where do you expect the dominoes? We're not holding you to this, but where would you, in a prime projection, if you had to say, if you had to plan your next 10 years now or, or tell folks what you thought was going to happen, where where do the dominoes start to fall first? Is it China? Is it in Russia? Is it the Middle East? And what do you expect to do with not just the welfare crowd, but so many yuppies in people think they're going to live large forever uh, uh, on propped up government derivatives and things? There's a lot of irrational exuberance out there. What happens when the music stops and we're playing musical chairs and passing this hand grenade around? How bad is it going to be? Well, you know, first of all, the biggest thing to understand beyond demographics and, and debt trends going against us is that we're in a bubble. We were in a bubble from late 94 to early 2000. People thought it would never end. It went up and up and up and up. And then when it crashed, it crashed rapidly. Bubbles crash twice as fast as they build. It tends to take five to six years to build a stock bubble, like late 24 to late 29, uh, 85 to ni uh, 89 in, in Japan. Uh, you know, we had late 94 to early 2000. Now we've got 
early 2009. I think this bubble's probably going to peak by March of next year, give or take. And, and the point is, it doesn't correct. There's some people saying, oh, we'll get a correction. Stocks are getting a little too frothy. Bubbles don't correct. They burst. When the NASDAQ bubble burst in two and a half months, the first crash took it down 40%. Half the entire decline came in the first two and a half months. So I tell people the dominoes are going to fall in the next few months. The, the market could be peaking here, but the signs are that, that we're going to get a correction here pretty soon and, and we'll go up a bit. Where will it crash hardest? Places like China? Yes, yes. And, and I think the, the dominoes, the, the danger periods for triggering this, last time it was the subprime crisis in the u.s real estate was falling as we predicted back in late 2005 the real estate had peaked the bubble was going to burst it started bursting then it triggered all these bad loans from very very bad lending that was the trigger but the whole world went down because of debt and demographics the triggers this time i think obviously politically uh putin and ukraine is the biggest thing uh you know the middle east has been in problems forever and will be for the next several years by our indicators but i think that's the biggest danger putin moving into Ukraine and continuing aggression on the political side. And on, on the um, demographic side, Germany looks worse than Japan did to me in 1989 when we called their crash ahead of time. Oh, yeah, the Germans aren't having kids. I mean, the Germans aren't having kids. They're done. They, they are done, and, and they're, they're going to keep, they have already disappointed all this year. We forecast that last year. Germany's going to disappoint, then it's going to really turn down in 2015. You did say that last year. Let's come back and look at that and talk more about Russia, because he just threw out uh, diplomats calling them spies. This is escalating quick. Regardless of which side of this you're on, this is serious. We'll be right back. I'm Alex Jones. Maybe you disagree with him, maybe you agree. 800 Two five nine ninety two thirty one eight hundred two five nine ninety two thirty one on this live Tuesday edition. Again, I'm your host, Alex Jones. Uh, this is out of the London Guardian. Putin says West is provoking Russia into a new Cold War as spies deported. Russian president denies fanning tensions. Says NATO expansion in Europe has been geopolitical game changer. They've now got fighter bombers and bombers flying around the Gulf of Mexico that are nuclear able. Vladimir Putin has suggested to German interviewer that the West is provoking Russia into a new Cold War. And he's also kicking out uh, different uh, NATO and other uh, ambassadors saying they're basically spies. Well, I mean, all these people are spies. Here's my deal. I don't say Putin's a great guy. My problem is Russia has not been expanding itself. They're lowering oil prices to try to bankrupt them. The West is. They are destabilizing Ukraine. I would expect Russia to come in and try to get control of its resources in eastern Ukraine. That said, though, the West is just going forward. Mr. Dent, what's your view on this as uh, from an atheistic view? I don't mean that obviously religiously, but as a political, you know, atheistic view. What is it? What do you expect Russia to do? And why do you call it the biggest trigger right now? Well, you know, it's just naturally in Putin's interest. The demographics of Russia are very poor in the years ahead. They've been growing very slowly. All of the communist countries, there was just an op-ed by David Brooks in the New York Times recently. that says, you look at the communist countries, like 90% of them are basically failed. Only 10% of them are working in capitalists. And a lot of those just because they have resources. Putin's got every incentive to expand by acquiring places like the Ukraine and Georgia back in the old Soviet Union. That, that's a strong goal of his. He makes no bones about it. He doesn't care if people does, don't like him. He's in control of his country. He's popular there. I think he's going to find every way to keep pushing. It's just a matter of, of when he finds the hole, you know, like a good runner in football and just breaks through the line. And, and so when he does that, that's going to be very destabilizing for the world. It, 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 it's the next World War III if we're going to have one. It's not going to be anything like World War II. The Middle East is more like civil wars within. This is something that, that, that could be a major conflict when it happens. We also, Alex, have a, a, a geopolitical cycle that was positive from 83 to 2000. Nothing went wrong in the world. From 2000, from 9-11, 2001, 9-11, everything's gone wrong. This cycle continues to point down. I've tracked it over 200 years into 2019. So, so we're also telling people the geopolitical arena in the world is not going to get better. It's only going to get worse in the Middle East, in Russia, Africa, you know, whatever. You know, maybe Ebola turns into something. I don't know. But 
But the stock market is going straight up as if we're in, not in a risky world. This is the riskiest time by all of our indicators since the 1930s, and the markets are acting like it's a cakewalk. Why? Because the Federal Reserve is guaranteeing the market. You know, they're just pushing money in, and the markets go down, they push more money in, and, and the markets think, hey, the Fed's got our back. So they're just going to go up until something goes wrong, and then you're going to see a bubble crash way worse than we saw in 2008 and 9. Let's talk about what the different political elites are doing. We're about to go to break. Long segments coming up. Clearly in the universities, clearly in leftist politics, Bill and Melinda Gates, you name it. They don't want Germany and England and the United States and uh, places like that uh, to have children. Uh, clearly there's a move uh, to tell you you shouldn't have you know more than one kid, but then they want to import third world populations from unskilled areas. Why would the political elites want to undermine the future of the West? Well, you know, I, I don't know, Alex, but it, it's something we've seen throughout history. When people get more fluent, when they move from rural to urban areas, they have less kids because it costs so much to raise a kid in urban areas. And now with the education bubble, which is the greatest bubble, I've ever seen, and, and, and has, something has to be done about it. Uh, you, know, you have to be rich just to get into college, or you have to get huge student loans. So, so this is a, a, a thing that goes with urbanization. It's happening around the world. People choose to have less kids, and governments and institutions support it. You have to have at least two kids a family to just sustain your country. And, and well, nobody doubts that demographic <laughs> fact. I agree. Then why are the eugenicists, the leftists, jumping on having less kids and saying it's bad to even have one or two, why Why do they have such an anti-civilization view? I want to see if you agree with that or disagree. Straight ahead, stay with us, folks. Your phone call that is because insider mega banks want a debtor society they can control. We'll get Dent's take and see if he disagrees here in a moment and start taking some of your phone calls. Before we go any further, though, here are some of the headlines. New York Times, Obama administration and health insurers have powerful, mutually beneficial partnership. New York Times. Val, companies will strenuously fight Republican efforts to dismantle Obamacare. And more taxes are now emerging. Meanwhile, 3,000 illegals joined Texas schools this week. 95% of families of illegals being released. New wave expected. I mean, this country is being imploded right now, ladies and gentlemen. Ex-Obama aide demolishes New York Times claim that Gruber role was limited. Former Obama aide says that he was the guru of the health plan. We'll cover that article coming up. And the video is on Infowars.com with the guest Steve Ratner. We're going to play that clip coming up. Once we get its top story, prisonplanet.com, infowars.com, harrydent.com is our guest website. Before I go any further, <coughs> give the gift this Christmas, I'll be politically incorrect, or this holiday of getting people healthy. We've come out with revolutionary, hardcore, missing link, hiding in plain view, true nation iodine that so many people are deficient in, that does so much more than just the regular iodines out there. Survival Shield X2 and Survival Shield Original. Survival Shield X2 is almost sold out. We have regular Survival Shield. Uh, DNA Force, Game Changer, Oxy Powder, you've heard the rave reviews, Super Male and Super Female Vitality, Lung Cleanse, and now the new, truly organic methylcobalamin, 80% of it's that, and the rest is the other organic, 20%. Secret 12, what we believe is the best B12 out there, just does amazing things. Unfortunately, we even got more delivered than we had previously produced. They had an overage at the laboratory, but it will be sold out within a couple days. Uh, so if you want to get Secret 12, it'll probably be till Christmas till we get more. Um, just can't wait to hear your reviews of it. It's been amazing for me and my family. Secret 12, what we believe is the most powerful, purest, highly absorbable form of B12 out there. 80% of it, of, of what's in there is what the injectable is. But you don't inject this. It's taken sublingually or lingually under the tongue or on the tongue. It's more if you put it under the tongue and let it really soak into those uh, glands, uh, the saliva glands there. But uh, very, very powerful. Ladies and gentlemen, InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. And you can also get a nightly news membership for all my films, the nightly news, the commercial-free podcast, special events, and more. 
20 years of material. It's been around 14 years now. PrisonPlanet.tv, InfoWarsNews.com, $5.95 a month, 20 people. We just turned it up yesterday. 20 people can use one membership. So just buy a membership, create a username and passcode that's original, share it with your friends and family. 20 can log in simultaneously PrisonPlanet.tv. And then when they try to censor us on YouTube and places, it won't matter. You have a major fallback position in HD. You can watch it on Roku, Boxy, your cable systems. It, we're adding new stuff all the time. And we just dominate the charts all over the place. And, you know, that's another question for Dent on trends. If, if a guy from Texas in 20 years... From nowhere, no, never took a loan, nothing can build this organization that reaches about 18 million people a week one way or another with podcasts, YouTube, terrestrial radio, satellite. What's the establishment media going to do? Well, CNN's getting dropped off dish. CNN's getting dropped off cable systems. But not just because they're too big, too top-heavy, too dinosaur-like. It's also they told us Obamacare was good. So, so, so Dan, I want to get with you today into the uh, Dow mini megaphone pattern chart, show that to folks, other key news. But what do you expect on that subject I raised? Or do you disagree that there is a anti-growth, anti-freedom, anti-family uh, move in the West that is counterproductive even to the political <laughs> class? Do you disagree with that, A? Or B, why do you think that is? Well, yeah, I think governments just aren't taking into account some fundamental changes that have already occurred. Women have entered the workforce at rapid rates since the 1950s. When women enter the workforce, it starts to become a dilemma between work, their career, and having kids. The countries that help women the most and have the strongest maternity policies, countries like Norway and Sweden, have some of the highest birth rates in the West. Countries like Australia, Canada, and New Zealand, and the U.S., encourage high immigration or attracted high immigration one way or the other and the immigrants tend to have more kids but but governments need to realize that as people get affluent as they move more into urban areas as women move more in the workforce you have to encourage and make it easier for women to still have kids they have to be able to work and have kids you can't make those work against each other and there's countries that are doing this and there's countries that don't have huge deficits like Australia. There's countries like Australia that attract high-quality immigration on purpose. There's ways to do this right. It's just most governments are asleep on this. And, and like you say, there's too much of encouragement, entrepreneurialism. We need to encourage all this stuff, more kids, more entrepreneurial activity, less bureaucracy, less top-down planning, and the most top-down planned economy in the entire world today to planning the USSR is China. And China is going to have the biggest bubble of all because their government created a bigger bubble than our government has. Well, they admit that. So what do you expect is going to happen? How do you see China going down? And then I want to get into the Dow uh, mini megaphone pattern that's so important. Uh, and look at the Dow at 6,000. You've got all these charts at harrydent.com, but history doesn't lie. Patterns don't lie. They're clearly there. How do you expect China to go? Well, well here, here's what you have to understand what China's done for it. People are saying, oh, this, the communist model actually works when you make it more capitalistic like China. No, the economists are clueless on this. Um, China has simply overbuilt everything, 20, 30, 40, 50% infrastructures, real estate and housing, industrial capacity. China has moved people from rural to urban areas. That is a natural thing, but not at the rate. China's economy is on steroids. They have overbuilt. I've calculated. They pretty much overbuilt their economy for 15 years out and created the greatest bubble in real estate in modern history. When this thing crashes, there's going to be 220 million People with no skills moved in from rural areas who've been just building stuff for nobody. When that bubble stops, they're going to have no work. They're not even legal citizens in these cities, only back in the rural areas, and they've already paved those over. This is going to be the biggest disaster in modern history. And, Alex, what I think it's going to prove wrong on these economists who are praising the China model as the new state-driven capitalism, it's going to prove that governments can't top-down manage an economy it's the free market democratic system sure. that have become so wealthy. And, and China is violating that, and they're going to prove this model, their new model, wrong. Well, that's right. History is totally uh, clear on that. And, and I love how they call it state-run capitalism. They have another name for it. It's called fascism. Yeah. I mean, it, it is. I mean, 
It is top down. It's crony capitalism. And the Communist Party is just like the mafia or something. Whoever knows the politicians gets favored by them. They get the deals. The politicians encourage all this overbuilding. And then they encourage the developers not to cut prices. And the developers encourage clueless, affluent Chinese to buy condos that are empty. They don't even try to rent them out. They just buy them. And the government and developers try to guarantee they'll go up. Well, developers are cutting prices. That's the first sign. They are cutting prices up to 40 Well, I was about to say, how do you build, uh, you know, tens of millions of units? I mean, just whole cities of, of empty 50-story, 60-story condos. And there's not even grocery stores for 15 miles away and no roads. It is insane asylum level. It, it, it is. This is so obvious, Alex. But economists don't say, well, China's growing at 8, 12 percent a year. I tell people, look at China's stock market where they don't measure growth, they measure profits. That's what stocks do. When you overbuild, you have high fixed costs, high debt loads, and you're unprofitable. China's stock market crashed 70 percent, more than ours in 2008, had a feeble rally into early 2010, and has been going down ever since. It's near its lows. The stock market is saying our economy stinks, and it does. Now, when, when real estate and, and all the speculation in real estate collapses, the affluent are going to lose wealth at a rate that nobody's seen. And the affluent people, the top 10 percent of people in China who are buying all this real estate, they control 60 percent uh, of, of the wealth and, and, and high amounts of income. When the, when the affluent go down, uh, China's going to go down. And this is going to be one of the biggest surprises of the next several years. What about the Dow mini megaphone pattern? We're going to put that on screen for TV viewers, but describe it for radio listeners. Yeah, yeah, put that up, you know, because we talked the last few times we've talked, I talked about a bigger megaphone pattern where you have these, each bubble goes higher, but each crash goes lower. Well, the same pattern's happening here near term. You know, since June, each high in the market's gone a little higher, but each low has gone radically lower. So we're at a critical point here in the markets. We had this correction, this sharp correction into October 15th, but then a surprisingly even sharper move back up. I call these the markets on crack. When you have this much stimulus and highly leveraged speculation by traders and stuff, the market just crazy. It just goes up, 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 and then it makes these violent moves. To, I mean, it kills the everyday investor. The market's at a critical point. With the top part of this little mini megaphone pattern, just a little above it, which is typical at the end, we're either going to go back down to the lower side, which would be about 15,500 in the Dow, or if we don't make a new low in the next month, I'm saying by mid-December is my decision point, we don't see a new low in the Dow, like 15,500 or so by early to mid-December, then this market's probably gonna go push up one more time and our target would be around 19,000 on the Dow, and that's because the final resistance would be the old high on the NASDAQ. Sure. Back in 2000, it, it, it 5,050, and that's about 7 to 8% higher. So stocks are either going to go 7 to 8% higher in the next couple of months, but if they break down about 12%, then this, this bubble is over. And then that's what our entire fiat economy is based on. I hear some people calling to talk radio. I talk to folks on the street. They say, I don't care if Obama's bankrupting coal power plants. I don't care if the stock market goes down. I don't own stock. They don't know they get electricity from those plants. They don't know companies are running and expanding and hiring people off their stock price. What's going to happen to kind of the trust fund kids, the yuppies, uh, the trendies, also blue-collar workers that don't care about these. I mean, what's going to happen when the when this comes crashing down? I expect people to just go crazy. Well, you know, um, Homer Simpson already got hit. The, the housing crisis, the, uh, they peaked. Uh, the average household peaks at age 46. We hit that in 2007. We predicted that 20 years before, that by 2007, our economic momentum after that would turn down. It did. Governments are just filling that up with free money, which is crazy. Uh, but Homer Simpson's already been hit hard. Underwater mortgages, wages have been declining, adjusted for inflation since 2000 for a long time. It's the top 20%, the college-educated, low unemployment um, people. And, and these 20% own all the financial assets like stocks. Most people own a home, but, but most people don't own that much stocks. And this stock market crashes, it's going to hit the affluent. And it's going to hit them much harder than it hit Homer Simpson because they're so invested in this bubble and in real estate and, and stocks. So and they're the very haughty and very arrogant. You know, you know, they make fun of the old timers that would put their money in, a, in their mattress or bury gold in the back 40. Well, you know what? Those old folks ended up being in a good place, you know, once the Depression hit and actually got richer. Uh, but, but it's the trendies that end up jumping out of buildings.
Yes, exactly. And, and the government has rigged the markets, you know, by putting interest rates at zero short term and zero adjusted for inflation long term. They're saying money is free. That means people bar, they, they're not going to buy bonds. So they forces them into the stock market. It allows traders and hedge funds and financial institutions to lever 30 to 51 at low cost. And that just creates, that just feeds this bubble. And then they make money the just off of the trades. It yeah. has to burst. It's not inflation we should worry about or hyperinflation. It's this bubble bursting because the government has deliberately created another bubble to keep the wealthy spending because they're the only people that will spend. And wealthy people peak later around early 50s, which is about now. Now, so... We see the wealthy going off a cliff naturally, and we see this bubble bursting hitting them because they own all these way overvalued financial That's assets. right. Absolutely right. This is a fact. Just, you, you just strap yourselves in. Mercedes and Dan for the guests. Then we'll go to Matt and Chuck and Jay after he leaves us all these Obama supporters. We've got our uh, reporters in Ferguson to give us a report at the bottom of the next hour. Uh, let's go to Mercedes in Oregon. you got a question for Mr. Dent. Go ahead. Yes. I was listening, and I take real issue with um, any statements claiming that people have to work until they're 75. That, to me, is, is, a, is an insane statement because, and I'll tell you, the minute that Alex Jones started speaking out and standing up, for all of us, for himself and for all of us, his family, this was on its way out, okay? People got to understand that. We are awaking. We're making changes. We're doing it on a conscious and unconscious level now. All this horrible <clears throat> stuff that you guys are seeing is because it's on its way out, okay? Well, you're ma'am, let me just stop you for a minute. Let me just stop because I want to quantify what you're saying. L listen, <clears throat> he's saying <clears throat> with the amount of entitlements, with what's been done, with all the free stuff given away to big corporations but also poor people, it's created debt bubbles that even if you work till 75, you're not going to be able to basically retire. We've created an impossible fraud living on future generations. So he doesn't want you to work till you're 75. He's saying that that's a mathematical fact uh, of what has been developed. And sorry, you didn't have three kids, so there isn't a big enough economy now uh, for, for you to be able to do that. I mean, this is just how it works. Uh, but, but I'm going to skip this network break. This is so important. I want to give her time. Quantify for me. Talk to me like I'm five years old, Mercedes. What are you saying here? You're saying we're going to beat this system. We're going to change it. We're going to whatever. I, I mean, explain to me, because their answer is bring in austerity, and so you'll be willing to live with less. That's the bureaucrat's answer, and then punish everybody, well, like with Obamacare for the overspending, uh, which is, you know, worse than fascism. I don't even know what you call this. What are you quantifying here? I mean, what are you trying to say? Okay, so look, you've already pointed out the fraud. It's a fraud, okay? So patterns, projections, all this stuff based on fraud. Therefore, we replace the fraud with a real economy. And this is where other people come into play, like Karen Hudes. She's been talking about restoring the economy on its basic level. What is the money based on? She's saying gold, and it's there. We can make this change without having to go into war because that is what everybody wants. I mean, it's it's so fraudulent. It's so big. Don't you understand? No, no, no. Listen, you I hear what you're saying, and I appreciate your call. I want to get Mr. Dent's take on this, but listen. They've made the decision that old people are crud and that babies are crud, euthanize everybody. That's going to be the real solution that Bill Gates is getting us ready for and the left's getting everybody ready for. Okay? We have to start valuing our parents again. We have to start valuing being savers again. We have to start valuing our heroes, being trailblazers and inventors again. I don't want to blame the general public, but on average, we've gotten pretty decadent and soft, okay? Now, now, Dent can disagree, but I want to get his take on this. He's just talking about what they're already getting everybody ready for. Is there a way out of this or a way to mitigate it and not make it as rough as it's going to be? Because I can tell this is scaring people. What do you take from what she said? Well, you know, uh, Mercedes, um I hear what you're saying. It's just here. Here's the number. 
67 trillion dollars in unfunded medicare medicaid and social security entitlements promised to people at a time when the economy is going to slow down naturally because the baby boom has peaked in spending so this is number is only going to get worse 67 trillion that is four times as much as our total government federal government debt that has people scared of that that's really if you can figure a way we can retire at 63 to 65 and not and fund that 67 trillion dollars in growing been great. My second thing is, everybody I know that's retired, or most people, are bored. I have no intentions to retire until my health fails. I'm going to work till 75, 80, whatever. I want to do something. I want to maybe work less. I maybe want to do something that's more, you know, fun to me or, or more challenging or something I value more. Yeah, you might want to go teach you know, economics. You might want to go to oil paint. You might want to, you know, uh, you know, run a gardening school. You might want to take more vacations, yeah. but, you know. Or start your own charitable foundation. There's many things to do, but this is a reality that America and all countries around the world are not facing. And you, you see Japan's debt uh, just keeps going up and up and up and up and up because they're t 11 years ahead of us. Japan has had their bubble burst ahead of us real estate stocks they've had this coma economy with stimulus that never turns around because they don't rebalance the debt and don't let the bubble burst and let things because see one of the problems is people old or young are facing unaffordable education unaffordable health care and people investing for the future are going to get no returns because stocks and real estate have bubbled up so much if we don't correct these imbalances which the free market system does very very well on its own then we're not going to have sure. a But I mean, look, there's a destructiveness to it. And I go back to the Democrats, and I've never been a partisan person, but they've really turned into a virulent form of cancer right now. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just stating the facts here. They're not like Australia or Switzerland saying, bring us your skilled workers, bring us your brains. They want now welfare moms, unaccompanied kids, people with mental illness, people with handicaps to bankrupt the system. And they admit they want to bankrupt it. To, like uh, uh, Ezekiel Emanuel said, we want to wreck everything to take it over. There is a piratical nature here where they want to ride these crises to dictatorial power. Your take on that statement? Well, you know, I, I'll just back up and say, look, we have to face this problem. It takes a transition. Germany's already raised their retirement age from 65 to 67, and, and they're older than us. That's no, why I know, but they're not even trying to replace people with, with, with hard workers now. Why would the Democrats want the worst immigrants out there? Right, exactly. We, we let, we let the, the least educated come across the border freely, and then we turn down people with master's degrees that come over here from China and India. Um, so, again, it's the opposite. Of, of what Australia does. Australia has has actually had uh, the next generation is larger than the baby boom generation in Australia, Norway, and Sweden, and a handful of smaller countries because they've encouraged births and or they've encouraged high quality immigration. We have to do that. We're doing the opposite. We have to stop committing suicide politically and economically. Let's go to Dan in Canada has a question for Mr. Dent. Go ahead. Hello. Yep, you're on the air. All right. Hey, uh, how you doing? Uh, first time caller. Welcome. Um, basically, I got a question. I was listening to some other uh, economic um, people talking, and the people that don't have money, let's say, to say buy gold or silver or whatever, like the people that are working hard, just trying to get by day to day, pay their bills, and raise their kids or families as best they can. Uh, they were saying to go into something like, for example, like, say, buy bottles of alcohol or cartons of cigarettes and just stockpile them because they could be used as bartering tools later on. Yeah, yeah, I've always told people like bourbon bottles and shotgun shells, things that you know people will want or, you know, canned goods or something. Makes sense. Gold and silver keep going down because the reality is we're in a deflationary environment. When you have asset bubbles, when stocks and financial assets bubble up, driven sure. by debt bubbles. Sure, debt I think he's asking how to be more successful now. To get deflation. Money gets destroyed. Cash is king. And like you say, just basic things that you can barter with will be much better than gold and silver. I see gold going to 700 or lower and silver going to 5 to $10 or lower. And I've been, I, we got people out of silver at $49 in late april of 2011 the day of the top we said well, it's still a wild card in my view but we got to look at all options expanding on that though i think he's mainly asking how can he be more successful you've got to see how trends are moving you might have to move to a boom town and know the business in the niche 
where you can charge more and be more successful and then force yourself to expand and duplicate your skill because it's almost like you can't stay small now and really gain a bunch of wealth in most cases you've got to duplicate that skill you've got in an area that is a boom area and so what did our ancestors do before when something was bad they migrated and so i mean it's coming to a time where you can't sit where you've always been you've got to move around and and, and try things and be entrepreneurial mr dent yeah you know and real quickly yeah this is the time to become an entrepreneur because jobs are going to get slaughtered when this happens but it's also there's in demographics there's always something booming is the baby boomers age if i were working for a car dealer i would switch to an rv dealer rvs are going to have the greatest boom in history health care nursing homes um vitamin companies things like this yeah. these things are going to boom with the aging of the baby boomers so you want to also orient your job or your skills to a sector that still has good demographic trends or like you say towns where people are moving to texas is a great state I mean, it's got the strongest migration and immigration uh, of any country, and it's created the most jobs. So, so if you're in Texas, you didn't have a bubble in real estate like like the coast did. So you're not going to get cream, and 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 you've got better demographics. So, so yes, it, you know, we've got a free newsletter, uh, Economy and Markets at HarryDent.com. We give people a lot of information. You do, and thank you so place. much. We're going to talk to you soon. HarryDent.com, folks, go check that out. This I'm Alex Jones. Stay with us. The we got the Obama supporters. Coming up. Radio Network.